My travels led me to the writer, John Graves, who settled in this part of Texas long after the days of too much cotton and too many cows. He calls this place, whose history he inherited, Hard Scrabble. Well, this little rough section of limestone hills in here near Glenrose, as I understand it, was, at one time was mainly prairie. I just, there was a general belief that things were going to last forever, you know. And they would wear out a farm somewhere and move on to a new piece of virgin land elsewhere, you know. I, somewhere in one of those books, I recorded a brag the old farmers up in Parker County used to have on the courthouse square. said, hell, I done wore out three farms in my time, you know. It didn't take long. I was once told by an old timer here who had talked to another man much older than he who had grown up on this place probably in the 1890s or so, that this whole expanse from our boundary up that way down to the creek here was once a cotton field. That means it was good black prairie soil, however deep it was, probably two or three feet at that time. You can see it now. Down to the rocks. There's still dirt here that'll grow grass, but uh, that's about all. permanent change. I mean, three or four thousand years might restore it, but I think that's about what it would take. Four or five years ago, the much hyped market for emus collapsed. So they started turning them loose. <laughs> and they showed up all over the countryside. We had four or five here at one time. Emu, emu, emu. Eventually, they all disappeared except one immature one, a forlorn creature. Uh, I can't stand to see anything hungry, so I gave him a little corn. He's got several hundred acres of land he can get at up above here, and uh, he'll go off, I guess, looking for a mate. And when he doesn't find one, he comes back. I sometimes find myself hoping he won't come back, but he always does. <laughs> They're not very attractive creatures, you know. <laughs> In recent decades, it has become customary and right, I guess, and easy enough with hindsight to damn the ancestral frame of mind that ravaged the world so fully and so soon. What I myself seem to damn mainly, though, is just not having seen it. Without any virtuous hindsight, I would likely have helped in the ravaging, as did even most of those who loved it best. But God to have viewed it entire, the soul and guts of what we had and gone forever now, except in books and such poignant remnants as small swift birds that journey to and from the distant Argentine and call at night in the sky.